and look at what's blooming behind my house. Ah, the bee. The bee is enjoying all that goodness. Oops, the bee's now flying around my head. <laughs> Hi, it's Nell, and today's video is all about caring for the beautiful Aglaonema Siam Aurora, also called Siam, or sometimes it's called Aglaonema Red. So stick around for that. I upload videos on a regular basis. It's been a semi-regular basis these days, but uh, I'm going to get back to it. All about gardening, both indoors and outdoors. So if you like that, be sure and subscribe and come back for more. You can also check out my website, joyousgarden.com, because there is a lot there for you to peruse. So it's been a hot minute since you've seen me, so I just want to fill you in about what's going on with this channel, my website, my rash, because I had that horribly for the past year and a half, but I'm going to talk about all that at the end, just in case you're not interested in what's going on in my life. So uh, let's get right into the care now, and perhaps I will speak with you at the end about all things Nell. <laughs> That's what staying at home has has done to me. Ah! <laughs> okay, on to the care. So I bought this Aglaonema as Siam. It also goes by Siam Aurora. There's, um, I've seen it called Ag Aglaonema Red. There's also a King Siam, I think, or King of Siam, which I believe has more red in it. But um, I wanted to do a separate video on this Aglaonema and ones that have, and also address ones that have more color in their leaves because they vary a little bit from the Chinese, Chinese evergreen care. You always traditionally think of it as a low, low light plant or a, a low light plant. Um, so there's one difference I found in caring for this plant. Um, and also another one that has a lot of color in its leaves, which I'm going to show you soon, that um, made me want to do a separate video in case you were searching for it. So before I go on, I want to show you these two other beautiful Aglaonemas. This one with this darker leaf can take lower light. One like this. This is um, either Emerald Beauty or Maria. I've seen some growers sell them as two separate plants, but I've also seen them sold as Emerald Beauty slash Maria. But regardless, um, this one doesn't need as much light, whereas this one is pink, Pink Valentine or Pink Lady. I think I bought this one as Pink Pink Lady, also sold as Pink or Pink Valentine. This one needs more light also to bring out the variegation in the leaf. So if I have some sweat dripping down my face, just ignore it, please. It's 104 here in Tucson, so it is hot. But anyway, I'm going to cover um, a few things, uh, size and growth rate, all that. But then I'm going to cover five what I think are the key care points. And then the rest will be in the blog on my website, joyousgarden.com. But I will leave the link to the blog and the top couple lines of the description box so you can go down and check it out there. Size. So this plant is a six inch plant and that's what I've seen them sold in. Uh, I've, I've seen them sold in on, on the regular but they also I've also seen them in eight inch and I know they are sold in ten inch pots also and they grow to be about two feet by three feet and as they grow, they get nice and dense, and you get all this beautiful growth right in all through here. And how it is used, it is used mainly as a tabletop plant, but as they grow and get taller and wider, then it'll be a low floor plant, unless you have a really big table for it to be on. <laughs> And in terms of the growth rate on this one, I have found it to be a moderate grower. Okay, so let's get close up so you can see the beautiful foliage on this. That is my Aeonium in the back. 
it looks a lot better in the winter. It doesn't like the heat. But boy, it's been hot this summer. But anyway, back to the Aglaonema. On to light. This is where I find it differs from the other Ag Aglaonemas, as I said. Um, it does best in moderate light. It needs it to bring out the color in there. I have it growing on a table in my kitchen, which is about six feet away from sliding glass doors with an east exposure. Now in Arizona, an east exposure is quite a bit of sun because the sun does shine a lot here in the desert. In your environment where you are, your home, you might need to give it more light to bring this out. And also in the winter time, you might have to move it to a, a brighter spot too. But it, uh, it really grows toward, toward the light as a lot of plants do. And because I want it to have this coloration in it, I rotate it every month or two so it gets, gets light on all sides. Now this one will tolerate low light. You just won't get the, um, a lot of the variegation in here. But as you can see, it has beautiful pink stems. In terms of watering, I'd say average. I let it go about three quarters of the way dry before I water it again. In this summer, it's about every seven days. It's very warm here. I don't keep my air conditioning cranked at like, you know, 70 degrees. I usually keep it about 80 or 79. So um, I water it every, every seven days, about every 14 to 20 days in the winter time. Now you, if you're not as warm, you could, you might water it every 10 days or every 14 days or in the winter every 21 days. It just depends on your environment. I've done a guide to watering indoor plants, which I will leave the link to that down below. That'll shed some light on it. And it'll also be in the blog post. So in terms of fertilizing and feeding, if you have watched any of my videos, you know that I fertilize the majority or I feed the majority of my house plants with worm compost and compost in the spring. I top dress them a quarter of an inch of each at the most. It is, um, it is very concentrated. It also breaks down slow. So I find that does a trick. Um, but now that I have a lot of house plants and I've been in Tucson for a few years now, I have started to feed them because I think it's so dry here and it's a tougher climate for house plants. So I feed them with Maxi and Eleanor's VF11. Um, I do them each twice during the season. I don't do them at the, at the same time, obviously. I space it out. So that um, has been working out for me and the links for those will also be down below. Pests. As I say, if you have house plants at some time, you are going to get, or they are, are, are going to get pests. Not you. I don't think you'll get a case of spider mites, <laughs> but your plants might. But the ones that I found uh, that Aglaonemas are susceptible to are mealybugs, aphids, and scale. Those are the ones that I know of anyway. So I've done a post on each of those so you can check that out in, in the blog post on this plant and the links will be in there. Um, all I can say on the subject of insects is catch them as soon as you see them because they spread like crazy. In terms of pets like cats and dogs um, I always cover this because I know many of you have them. I've got two kitty cats so uh, this plant is in the Araceae family Many very common and popular house plants are in the um, Araceae family, like Anthurium, Pothos, Monstera, Philodendrons, what else? Um, Spathophyllums, and on and on. And they are all considered to be uh, toxic. I consult the ASPCA website for this info. I see how it's toxic and then what effects it is going to have. And then I make uh, up my mind from there. So that's all I'm going to cover on care here. I will tell you that I have done a separate post on repotting 
aglaonemas, including the steps to take and the soil mix to use. Same for this plant too, so I will leave that link down below and also in the post. And all the other care points will be in the blog post on this lovely plant. And I do want to tell you that this plant flowered last year. It flowered last year around this time or slightly earlier. It's not flowering this year. The um, Emerald Beauty slash, you know, Maria that I showed you over there, it actually has a couple flowers on it still. It, it flowered heavily. So, yes, this plant does flower and mine has flowered. So maybe it'll flower in the fall this year. We'll see. With houseplants, you never do know. So, in terms of an update, um, it's been an interesting summer, hasn't it? We are still in the midst of coronavirus, um, a lot of other things going on in our country. So, I really haven't been doing that much other than work. And I've been spending a lot of time outside. I get up early in the morning because it's so hot here. I swim or I go for a walk. But um, I have been catching up mainly on updating old blog posts because I have so many blog posts that need to be updated in terms of links and keywords and other things in them that it's taking me a while to do that, so that's why I've been sort of um, absent here in August because it takes a long time to do. And also, it was a really busy spring for me work-wise, so uh, it's nice to not be working all the time. And also, if you live in the West, you know how hot it's been. It's been a really hot summer here in Tucson. It's been very hot and dry, so it's just been, ugh. <laughs> Can we start to cool down? It's unusually hot still at this time of year, so it's um been over 105, you know, sometimes 110. Looking forward to, looking so forward to being in the high 90s. <laughs> but uh, this is the first summer that I've been here all summer because I usually travel a lot during the summer. That noise you just heard, the big cactus over there, because it is so dry, I guess, keeps on dropping limbs. So it sounded like there was somebody somebody climbing over the fence, but it was just a big arm of the cactus falling off. Actually, um, I will show you a clip of what I mean after I get through with this. So I'm on the other side of the fence now, and it's one of these two big arms that fell off of this cactus here that made that noise but it's so dry they're just the, those big heavy heavy limbs are just falling off so in terms of YouTube I'm not sure if I'm gonna post videos twice a month or three times a month my website is my main business so I'll always be posting over there and updating there but I'm not quite sure um I'm at I'm in my 60s so the desire to work all the time is not there. And also I'm not building up a career. I'm just sort of plateauing out on it. So I just want to um, keep the videos coming, keep some posts coming. I don't know how, how frequent the videos are gonna be or how many I'm gonna do a, m a month. I'll see how it goes into the fall because I want to get more of my posts updated so we'll see but I'll always be popping in because I have a lot of experience to share with you I've never considered myself or said that I'm any kind of an expert but because I grew up with a greenhouse I studied horticulture I've worked with plants my whole life I have a lot of experience to share so that is what I like to do also I've grown house plants in many different climates and um, I've gardened in different clients, climates too, so that's why I like to share what I've learned about all these wonderful things. And now there are a lot of new varieties like these coming out too. So my rash, yes, yeah, so last year was a tough year. I've had this rash for, or I had it for almost two years. Um, went to a lot of 
doctors. It was a lot of money, a lot of tests. Different doctors required different tests. It was also very time consuming. Um, and I wasn't getting any results for a while. You know, they just keep on stabbing this and that and everything else. So I decided to go up to a doctor up, up, up in Phoenix and through a series of tests and other things, I've got Lyme disease. So that's what I actually had. And that's, I had such a buildup of bacteria in my body that it was just causing rash, rash, rash. And I also had parasites too. The parasites had come back. Isn't this just a lovely thing to talk about? So that's about it. Nothing too exciting on the personal front because I've been, I've been being good. I've been staying home. I put on lipstick today though. It's hard to wear lipstick when you are, are wearing a mask. And also, uh, I haven't been going out and about all that much. It hasn't been all that much of a change, you know, for me because I work from home. So, uh, that has been, um, that was actually very fortunate for me that I was able to still work through all this and I did not lose a, a job. So, and it kept me occupied during all the, all the madness going on. So I hope you are well and healthy and that you are staying, staying on the positive side anyway. I know, I know that it's been a tough time for people, but for me, what I find really has helped me out is plants and nature and just spending time looking at a lot of greenery and being surrounded by greenery. So I do have a lot of new material planned through the end of the year. I don't, I don't know if I'll do them all as, you know, videos, but I'll probably do half of them anyway, just because it takes a while to make the videos and get them edited and up. But I do enjoy them and I do enjoy seeing your comments down below, even though I don't answer them all. I answer them in the first eh, either two to seven days, but it's just hard to keep up with all the all, all the comments on the blog and here and uh, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff is just a little bit hard, but I do really appreciate them all. So I hope you found this video about Aglaonema Siamarora. I was just about to call it Red Aglaonema because I go in between the two names um, to, to, to be helpful. As I just said, I have more videos coming your way, so be sure to stay tuned for those. I appreciate all your likes and your comments and just seeing your names before. I do appreciate them. Now, let's get into our gardens or into our indoor gardens and make our worlds a more beautiful place. As always, I thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.